Illinois, like many states across the United States, grapples with issues surrounding safe water. While the state has made significant strides in water quality management, challenges persist, particularly in certain areas where access to clean and safe water is compromised. And just note, with climate change, more and more states will grapple with greater and greater challenges. That's what, and Illinois is very well positioned for safe water as long as we remain good stewards. Mm -hmm. Illinois first started studying its water quality in the 1960s. There was, but there was nearly a 40 year gap between that time and implementing a water plan put forth in the 1980s. That's why this year I am leading Senate Bill 2741, which would codify the Water Plan Task Force, ensuring that it meets regularly. Pretty much every aspect of water is covered in the state water plan. Our local water resources continue to be a vital asset to the state's ecological well-being. As environmental circumstances change, we need a plan that targets critical water issues in a timely manner so our state can effectively react to each consequential need and continue being good stewards of our water resources. Without a continuation of our current water plan task force, Illinois water resources will be left more vulnerable to persisting environmental threats like contamination. This poses risks that will negatively impact our drinking water, flooding mitigation, and the preservation of healthy communities across the state. That's where the task force comes in. I am super excited about what state and local authorities can accomplish for our water resources, from the Great Lakes, to rivers and streams, to groundwater, to flood mitigation, and water treatment plants. I look forward to working with my colleagues to pass this valuable legislation in the coming months and in the future. Lake Michigan is known for its beauty and the entertainment it provides. Going to the lake, no matter if you live in Waukegan, North Chicago, or Chicago, uh, is many people's favorite pastime. I just want to say before I continue, we have declared this session the year of water, and I want to thank Chair Elman for coming up with that, because as she described from looking at the water report, this is really appropriate to focus on water this session. In addition to Lake Michigan, Lake Michigan offers so much more than just a fun place to boat or walk around. It is the largest water public drinking water supply in the state, serving nearly 6.6 .6 million people, in addition to being Illinois' largest recreational resource. We often take clean water for granted, but the reality is many of our waterways are tainted with bacteria and chemicals. If we do not protect our water supplies, supplies a million in Illinois residents will suffer alongside the state's economy and the environment. Senate Bill 3716, which I've advanced this session, is an initiative of the IEPA to regularly monitor water quality from near shores, harbors, and public water supply intakes in Lake Michigan, and to provide an executive summary every two years on conditions of the water quality in Lake Michigan to the governor and the General Assembly. It is that vital that we protect the quality in Lake Michigan not only will this measure save lives by ensuring we have access to a safe water supply and suitable beaches for our children and neighbors, but we are also working today to guarantee healthy environment for tomorrow. My name is State Senator Mike Simmons and I represent the 7th District on the north side of Chicago. Uh, a district where we abut with four miles of Lake Michigan. Um, it's actually the pride and joy of being the senator for the 7th District is that I can literally walk a quarter mile east of my apartment and be um, forever open and clear waterways that um, urban planners and, and, and civic leaders may ensure it would be a right to us uh, here in 2024. So I am fully invested in working with my colleagues here to fully protect our waterways um, and our water supplies in Illinois. And so I'm proud to stand here today uh, and champion the Safe Public Drinking Water Act, SB 3450, um, really uh, key legislation that will implement a state-only maximum containment level for, our, uh, for toxic chemicals and toxic compounds that exist in our water supplies um, and other pollutants. 
This is really important because we know that the U.S. Department of uh, the EPA has told us that these chemicals are known to have a hazardous effect on human health, um, affecting early childhood development, affecting the, the uh, speed at which chronic disease will progress in our adults, um, and even affecting our water quality, or uh, I'm sorry, air quality. And so what we've done here is to uh, put together legislation that will require that the IEPA at the state level, the Department of Public Health and the Illinois Pollu Poll Pollution Control Board will uh, look at the, each of the levels of these contaminants, will study those contaminants, and then we'll put together a limit uh, for the contaminants that would be the contaminants that would be regulated by the state of Illinois. Uh, SB 3450 will work in tandem with the Illinois State Water Plan that Chair Elman mentioned earlier that was published in 2022 um, and is really just a great compass for legislators uh, to build on the, the, the recommendations and the findings that came out of that timely report two years ago uh, so that we can protect our, our, our lakes, our riverways, our streams, our creeks, our swamps, our marshes, our bogs, our fens, our water supply that we drink every day, uh, both in the parks as recreational um, uses, but also right in our apartments and our homes where we, we drink uh, water every day. Um, I also think that SB 3450, one of the things I'm really excited about with, with the press conference we have here is that our bills really do work and, and complement to each other. Um, you know, Senator Johnson's legislation, uh, Chair Elman's legislation, I believe that my bill will complement Senator Fine's legislation, which we'll, she'll talk to you about in a minute. Um, and it's really just a, is, is a moment where we as leaders are putting a lot more urgency on, on the, the, uh, the, safety, the safety of our public drinking, um, access to our waterways, and like I said, just the year of the water, right? And making sure that that's, uh, that's something that we carry forward as a mantle for the rest of the year. Um, I'm also excited to be here today because this builds on legislation that I've been able to pass uh, in the previous session uh, that would require that whenever lead is found and, and lead pipes, uh, that there's not just the option of doing an abatement, but that is a requirement that the departments of buildings will have at municipalities all across the state. Um, legislation I worked on with then State Representative Lakeisha Collins, who's now in the Senate. Um, and so this, again, is just a part of a broader set of initiatives that, that I and my colleagues have brought forward uh, and look forward to, to steering these, these bills to, to passage. Today, like my colleagues have mentioned, we are focusing on an issue that impacts both human and environmental health. It's up to us now to create policy that will have a positive impact on the future. PFAS are man-made chemicals that have found their way into our everyday lives. They are known as forever chemicals. They have been found in our bodies, our water, and our soil. These persistent chemicals do not degrade easily, leading their way to toxic accumulation. Studies have shown that PFAS exposure has been linked to a variety of adverse health outcomes, including reproductive and developmental effects, thyroid disorders, and even cancer. These chemicals are found in products that we use absolutely every day, from cookware to carpets to fabric treatments to cosmetics and even your dental floss contains PFAS. Although we have taken positive steps to restrict the use of PFAS in previous years, more work needs to be done. Through Senate Bill 2705, beginning in 2025, the sale and distribution of products such as carpets, cookware, food packaging, and more containing intentionally added PFAS would no longer be allowed. By 2032, all products with PFAS, unless it is proven they cannot be made without it, would be banned. By passing this measure, we can prevent these chemicals from further contaminating our environment and impacting the well-being of consumers who use these products. We need to lead the way in Illinois and nationwide in taking the necessary steps to prevent this compound from causing severe health issues and irreversible damage to our environment. I am proud to stand here with my colleagues today to not only educate the public about the dangers of PFAS, but to present this important environmental safety measure that will have a positive impact on our healthy future. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to keep up to date with news from the caucus. For more information on what the Senator is working on, you can follow them on social media using the links in the description below.